Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Laura. And uh, based on the two guys you see sitting here, it was a fitting game in Winnipeg tonight. A whole lot of ugly. <laughs> wall to wall ugly. Speak for yourself. All right. Still, no, it was it still was ugly. A it was a typical, <laughs> typical game that the Blacks have played pretty much all year long. Uh, the streak, actually they haven't lost for a few games now, but the streak that they have gone with only two victories in a row during this, this year and two losses in a row, that is it. So it's been an up and down year. We went through that in the pregame show. And if it's going to be like that all year long, they're going to be a 500 team. They've got to start stringing some victories together. And the only way to do that is to get the fours to start scoring. Chalios is second in scoring. Suter's third in scoring. Jeremy Roenick is first. But the other forwards have to start putting the puck in the net, getting some cohesiveness. And they have to start taking advantage of the power play, something that they didn't yeah. do again tonight in Winnipeg. Nikolai Habibulin injured earlier in the week. That means Tim Chevelday is now the number one goalie for the Winnipeg Jets. And Tim Chevelday through the years, whether he's playing for Detroit, or playing for Winnipeg has given the Blackhawks problems. Early in the game, Jets up ice. Igor Korolev in on Ed Belfour. Ed Belfour making a nice save. He was on 15 saves in the first period. Later on, Jets in the power play. Korolev from the far out one-timer hits the post. Still nothing, nothing. Then Kip Miller behind the net. Puts it out in front. Quick shot by Bob Probert trying to fight for the rebound. Tim Shevelday coming up with a big save. Then Jeremy Roenick gets the pass from Joe Murphy. JR makes a good move here. Shevelday made a better play. An excellent play by Shevelday. He just gets the last second. It's an empty net. He just last second, he knocked it away. Then later on, Bob Probert tees and fires, goes wide. The carom comes out. Eric Daze chopped at it, but couldn't fire it into the net. No score after one. 26 seconds into the second. Blackhawks, imagine this, lose a faceoff. Solani with the blast from the point. Bell for it, the save, keep the chuck. Bill, that's why the Blackhawks are willing to pay him big bucks. Big, strong guy, scoring a lot of goals, just a great player. 1 0. Winnipeg had the lead. Then Chris Chelios fires it out. Here comes Patrick Poulin picking up the carom, going in on Chevelday. Poulin goes to the short side and beats Chevelday. Game tied up at 1 1. Jets later on, 2 on 1. Eric Weinrich being the one. Solani in on Bell for. Did he get a little help from the post? I well, think so. when you get a carom like that, probably. Hawks get slow getting back. Ed Belfort comes up big again. Third period, Darren Turcott gives the Hawks some more trouble. Moves around the defense, Chris King out in front, but he fans in the shot. But Quintal from in the circle, and Ed Belfour is there with the answer. Then Turcott in the corner, brings it out, shoots. Ed Belfour makes the save. Shane Doan, who killed the Hawks last trip in, he is stopped as well. Alexei Zhamnov across the blue line, two guys at him. Chris Chelios swats at it. Kachuk over to Zhamnov. Less than a minute to go in the game. Hawks down 2-1, but Jeremy Roenick with a great effort to get the Blackhawks to tie in the final 30 seconds. Well, no doubt about it. It was a big tie for them here, but watch Jeremy. Just stands there, goes to the front. Shovel that goes for that little fake. Ends up having about three inches to put the puck in, and he did so. What a great goal by Jeremy to hang in there. The only shot of the period. That is amazing. Yeah, Blackhawks came within 25 seconds for the first time in their history <laughs> of going with no shots on goal in a period. All right, we're going to take a look at the keys in just a little bit. We're going to run through the scores of the other teams in the Central Division first. Edmonton and St. Louis. St. Louis wins it big. Final score, 7-3. Brett Hull with a couple of goals. He now has 14 on the season. Look at what Detroit did to the Montreal Canadiens tonight. 11-1. to uh, Kozlov, Vyacheslav Kozlov with four goals. He now has 11 on the year. Basically a big night for everybody in Detroit. Patrick Waugh was pulled out halfway through the second after he had given up nine goals. That'll kill your goals against average. <laughs> Mike Vernon in the Nets for Detroit tonight only gave up one. Anaheim and Toronto at Maple Leaf Gardens. Ooh. They are now in overtime. The game is tied up 4-4. Paul Correa with a goal in that game. He now has 17 on the season. Just getting underway, Dallas and Los Angeles playing at the Forum. The Kings have won four of their last five at home. Dallas. 3-1-1 one one, their last five games in L.A. All right, time to get more on the game between the Blackhawks and the Winnipeg Jets tonight. One last time, let's go back to Winnipeg Arena. Here's Pat and Dale. Well, the Blackhawks uh, skated to a 2-2 tie with the Winnipeg Jets in the arena. And one of the reasons for that, Jeremy Roenick, who scored the tying goal with just a matter of seconds remaining in the game. JR, let's first talk about uh, the third period in which... Uh, the Hawks had got only one shot on goal. Yours was it. But when you fell behind in the final minute, what sort of things were being talked about on that bench? Well, it was really quiet. I know I was extremely scared. I, uh, you know, I should have got the puck in uh, at the blue line at the time, and they uh, they got the puck, came back in a two-on-two, -two and uh, again uh, got through and scored the goal. So it was really quiet, and I think the guys were uh, were really nervous what happened. But uh, you know, then we came back with just a second left, and I got the puck down here, went to my backhand, pulled it back to my forehand, and. Just seemed to be enough uh, on the open side to get in. That's uh, 
I was really surprised that you went to the forehand. I thought maybe you were going to come out and just try to jam it on the backhand. Well, I Did think that's something? what everybody else thought too, and that's uh, that's why it was such a great play, and that's why you're up there, and I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you've been down there before. I'm sure you've scored your your, your one share. One shot and one and one one in. Is that something that uh, has ever happened to you, or could you believe that? What was anything happening on the bench? Were you talking about? Listen, we haven't had a shot on goal, or were you aware of it at all? You know, I don't think we were even aware of it. I think. Uh, you know, we had some good pressure. We, it was really a, a period that was played more, mostly in the neutral, neutral ice. So there really wasn't uh, that much to, uh, to talk about. I think it was really quiet. I think we kind of ran out of gas a little bit in the third period. You know, it's been a long trip, and uh, it's the way it goes. Hopefully we can continue to get better. JR, I thought you really kept your composure. It was not an easy night for you. Collided with Krivo Krasov. King took a couple <laughs> runs at you. You ran into Kachuk. You were upended a couple of times. Yeah, it seemed that that's what they were trying to do. And uh, when you ran into Krivo Krasov, that seemed to be the icing on the cake. Yeah, you broke your stick. But you went on the bench and seemed to recoup and, uh, and, and came back and scored a big goal. Well, it, it was really frustrating for me out there. I was getting hit a lot. And, you know, a couple acrobatic moves. I think I'm going to go join the circus tomorrow and uh, see if they need another acrobat tomorrow at the circus. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, it was very frustrating for me. I was getting hit a lot. And, and then when I ran into Sergey, I, I felt if, uh, if the puck was moved right there, I could have got in on a breakaway. And, and then he came and I just collided with him. But, uh, you know, he came over and, and we gave a little tap on the back and, and uh, we kept going and kept our composure. So, you know, it was, a, it was a rough night and a lot of bangs and a lot of bruises, but uh, it was a hard fought game. Well, I'm sure uh, you'd rather have wins than ties, but they could be losses, too, and I think you guys got to be pretty satisfied with how this trip has gone, aren't you? Yeah, I think we're very satisfied. We worked uh, very hard. We, I think we made uh, very large steps in, in, in becoming a better hockey team. You know, we only lost one game. That was the first game of the trip. There, are, there were three 2-2 ties, but, um, you know, those are hard-fought hard games, and they could have gone either way. So um, I think we, we feel very fortunate and, and very uh, happy about our, our, our trip. And, you know, we have one more game in, in, uh, in the Garden and Rangers, but uh, looking forward to get back into Chicago. Well, in the uh, great career of Jeremy Roenick, we've learned something new tonight to pull the puck to a good angle, then get it to a bad angle before you score. Well, I, you know, <laughs> after that first, after my first breakaway, I, I thought I had, uh, I thought I had him down and out, and uh, the defenseman just put a stick in to where, uh, where I couldn't shoot the puck forward, and I was really, really frustrated with that first breakaway. I thought I had him beaten. And, uh, you know, it was just, I just feel very fortunate to get that one at the end. I know you're exhausted. Thanks for stopping by, Jared. All right, guys, always. All right, let's send you back to the Sports Channel studios now. Well, I thought we were going to get a little arm wrestling there before those guys got <laughs> it. That's one thing they are going to miss about Winnipeg is the arm wrestling table up there in the broadcast position. All right, we saw some of the key moments of the game as far as Jeremy Roenick was concerned. He had another good break in the game. He certainly had some great opportunities tonight. And one of the things about Jeremy Roenick is he'll stay with it. I mean, if, if he gets frustrated on a couple of breaks, and a couple of chances he did tonight, he stayed with it and basically just jammed that puck into the net. There wasn't anything pretty about no, it. Just, just put it in through Shovel Day's glove and it goes in and ties the game. I think that shows the elite players. When the elite players are on the ice, they know a situation like that time when you have to score, you just bear down and you grab the puck and do what you have to do to score the goal. And that's what JR did. He's a great leader and I think he's coming into his own. A little bit of a slow start, but now he's playing well. All right, let's take a look at the keys to the game as you saw them tonight in this 2-2 tie. Well, we've seen a lot of the uh, keys so far, and as Joan Rivers says, can we talk? I think they're talking to themselves. Great pass. We just saw Jeremy. Great save by Shovel Day, just getting a piece of it. But uh, this is in the first period when they had a few chances. A good first period. I thought they played very well and skated well. Another shot by Probert, as, as we've seen earlier also. The re rebound by Sutter. Great play. Dazie's got the whole net, but Eddie Olchuk, who's playing pretty well of himself now in Winnipeg, Made a great save, and uh, Dale thought that should have been a penalty shot. But here is a lost faceoff, which has happened so much, and I've said it a lot during this road trip. And to Chuck Outman, here it is, the lost faceoff. Olchik goes to the net, what he's supposed to do. A little bit of a screen. Eddie makes the initial save, but the defensemen get beat in front of the net, and to Chuck just out muscles everybody and slides it under Eddie. Watch this. Carney dumps the puck in. Now watch how basic and easy Winnipeg moves the puck. One quick pass here through Roenick. Great pass up all the way across, and Carney's caught, and an excellent pass in, but a good save by Eddie, and that's why he was our player of the game. A lot of opportunities against him, and uh, there's just so many other chances. There's the Hawks. They just dump it in and get off. After a play like that, you want to get off and hide your head a little bit. Here we go again. Kriva Krasov. This is one of the best individual plays so far, I think, in the year. Watch him stick handle. This is a typical Russian. All the moves, all the moves. Can't finish, though. He stopped here. Look at that. The ice gave out from underneath them. But uh, no shot. And that was in the third period. An excellent opportunity. There's a great save by Eddie. The rebound was there for Solani, but he didn't get it. This is on the power play. Watch this. Another shot. Misses the net. This is late in the game. I thought Winnipeg with a great power play. If they had scored there, it would have been over. And here's Kriva Krasov and JR. What an excellent hit. Wrong way, though. Look at that. 
That's uh, injury time. Watch GR here. This shows his frustration. He just spoke about it. This is how the trip's going. They just can't score enough. JR takes it out of it on his stick. But uh, what can you say? It's been a long trip. JR said they're pretty satisfied. But uh, when you look at the competition, and I've always judged this road trip on, on a key situation for the Hawks during a year, and even when I played, I think they should be a little bit better. The competition hasn't been that great. But on the other hand, Bill, and it was something I mentioned on game time tonight, was the fact that I'm not going to say the regular season is meaningless because right. I don't because I don't believe that. But I do believe that you want to get rolling once March hits and you spend this time trying to find out exactly what kind of a team you've got. Set up what kind of moves you want to make. Make sure you get your line combinations together and everything. Hey, points are points. You want to make sure you pile them up and you have a chance of getting to the playoffs. But believe me, once the weather starts to turn warm in March, you want to be hitting the ground running. So to me, this time of year, you take the points whatever way you can get them. Well, I think all we have to do is look back to last year when they went on the 13-game streak that they never won a game in, and then they came back and won five or six in a row at the end of the year, and they went in on a high note into the playoffs, and look what they did. They went all the way to the semifinals and fought hard and, and peaked at the right time. And that's exactly what you're saying, Jim. If you peak at the end, you got a good chance of going a long way. That's right. I and mean, these are veteran hockey players that have a lot of experience, and the proof is in the pudding once we get into <laughs> April and May. All right, our next Hawks game here on Sports Channel coming up at Wednesday night, 6 o'clock for game time. And then really a, a good chance for the Blackhawks to kind of show what they can do because they have played, with the exception of against Colorado, very well against the elite teams of the NHL. Blackhawks beat the Rangers in the United Center a couple of weeks ago. They beat Pittsburgh in the mm -hmm. United Center. Philly. Uh, beat Philly at home. So the Blackhawks go on the road to play the Rangers Wednesday night. Game at 6.30, game time at 6 o'clock. All right. What do you look for? Because now the Blackhawks get a chance to come home. Don't get to practice at the United Center because the circus sure. is still there. But at least the guys finally get to come back to Chicago after being out on the road for a couple of weeks. Well, they get to relax just a little bit, and then it's right back at it. New York's a great team, so I think they have to come back and focus on a couple of things. I think they have to work on their power play. Two for 25, I believe, in this trip. Not very good at all. A couple of days of practicing that. Get into New York, and then they got some home games. they got to get home ice advantage back the way it used to be, home ice. All right, we're going to trade in our penalty-killing center for a linebacker here in uh -oh. a moment. Billy's out of here. Thanks for being in here again. Doug Buffone will be here right after this timeout to talk about the Bears. We'll also, coming up later in the program, we will have a look at college basketball as Lou Henson gets a look at the Cameron Crazies. Illinois with a big game tonight at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Also, the rest of the NHL, including the Panthers taking on the Hartford Whalers. And as I mentioned, Bears Nightly coming up next. One of the key questions as the Bears get ready for the Lions, can the Bears stop those Detroit wideouts?